Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's virtual event hosted by the AgBio team here at Ginkgo BioWorks. My name is Josh Geilhufa, and I'll be one of your hosts, along with my colleague Magali Gilaber, head of our Ag Biologicals division. We're excited to tell you about Ginkgo's platform and how we can help you win in the Ag Bio market. We'll go deep today on our product head starts and how those enable you to move faster and de-risk discovery. A quick overview of our event. First, we'll chat with Magali about the challenges of new product development in ag biologicals and how our platform can address them. Magali used to work at uh, Bayer's Ag Biologics R&D division before joining Ginkgo. This is the team that brought Serenade, Poncho Votivo 2.0, and other bi uh, biologicals to market. There are few people with more experience in this field. Then we'll learn about how Ginkgo's experts in ag biologicals can accelerate your product pipeline with product head starts. To tie it all together, we will talk through one head start in detail. And then of course, we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A with our audience. I do want to call attention to, your, uh, to the Q&A option at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You can type us a question at any time and we've got a big team here to answer them, both in real time in the text boxes and also during the Q&A session. We're happy to have questions about business, tech, biology, anything on your mind about working with Ginkgo. Before we get started, I, I did wanna share a bit about me and a bit about Ginkgo BioWorks. I am a director of business development here in our agriculture practice. Prior to Ginkgo, I spent several years at Zymergen which was a synthetic biology company that Ginkgo recently acquired. Um, there, I also led BD efforts focused on agriculture. I got my start in synthetic biology 15 years ago as a researcher at Codexis. This is back in the bioindustrials days for those who remember that time. Um, and I also have an MBA and a master's in biophysical chemistry. If you're not familiar with Ginkgo BioWorks, I'll introduce us by restating our mission. We make biology easier to engineer. We are passionate about this mission. We are not a product company. We don't sell products. We exist to help solve your biggest R&D challenges. Bring us your problems. These are the ones you don't have the in-house capabilities to solve. Or build products on our platform that would otherwise cost multiple years and millions of dollars to, uh, of internal investment to create. Since 2008, we've invested over half a billion dollars into building our R&D platform for you. We don't have a product pipeline. We are not advancing a lead candidate to field trials. We are laser focused on building a platform that serves our customers end-to-end R&D needs and making sure that that platform is equipped with the most advanced technology, including software and automation. That's why we acquired Bayer's Ag Biologicals R&D division in West Sacramento. We now have a 175,000 square foot plant science facility and a team of 150 scientists who are experts in developing ag biologicals. That's in addition to the 1,000 team members who work across our Boston, Bay Area and European R&D footprints. We want to make biology easier to engineer so you can build the products of the future. So we entered into a strategic collaboration with Google Cloud to build large language models that will power the future of biology. With Ginkgo and Google, you can discover the next active trait, trait or active ingredient that will define the next 50 years of ag biologicals. Now, what does that mean for our customers? Well, we are in an ideal position to be your open innovation partner. We invite you to dream big with us. What will help you become a leader in ag biologicals? We have great ways to get started on our platform so you can get to know what it's like to work with Ginkgo as your innovation partner. If you have a product in your portfolio or a near to market candidate, you can take advantage of individual service offerings like strain or fermentation process optimization to improve those existing products. And if you're looking to develop something completely novel that complements your existing portfolio, our product head starts help you bypass some of the early discovery steps of that process. Now I'd like to bring in Magali. Hi everyone. Thank you so much, Josh, for the introduction. It's, it's truly great to be with uh, all of you today. 
So my name is Magali Gilabert, and as Josh was telling before, I'm the head of the Ag Biologicals Division at Ginkgo. I lead a team of approximately 150 people in Sacramento and in Boston, and we are all exclusively focused on supporting the discovery, development, and improvement of Ag Biologicals for customers. So I've spent my whole career focused on Ag Biologicals, uh, first at AgriQuest and then at Bayer Crop Science. And I have a PhD in plant pathology from UC Davis. I was with uh, Bayer for 12 years, most recently as a vice president of microbial research technologies, where I led a team of 60 scientists to commercialize a number of Bayer's flagship uh, products that included uh, Ponchovotivo 2.0, as well as uh, um, a series of different leads that are right now in the Bayer, uh, in the Bayer pipeline. So I am an R&D leader in Ag Biologicals. I know firsthand the challenges to bring new products to the market. I've spent my whole career in Ag Biologicals and I am truly, truly passionate about this specific technology and the implication and the opportunity that it can represent to transform Ag. Um, I'm very excited for, for myself to now be working with Ginkgo. I truly believe that we have a very unique position as a platform company to enable the entire industry to move forward with better um, ag biologicals. Oh, thanks, Magali. Uh, do you have your coffee ready? Actually, this morning I have an espresso. Thank you. Ah, love <laughs> it. I know. <laughs> well, then let's get started. Um, now, Magali, you're an R&D executive at Kinko, and you've mm -hmm. acted in similar roles at product companies like Bayer Crop Science. Um, in those roles, as an R&D executive, as a portfolio or innovation manager, um, what kept you up at night? That's a, very good, that's a very good question. So my number one goal was to always ensure that my product portfolio was commercially relevant was growing and had a very uh, nice balance risk uh, between existing and future products and as well as um, time to launch. Okay. And so this is portfolio risk that you're, you're managing or is it product development risk? It's truly both because um, internal R&D resources are very precious. So you really want to figure out the best way to use these resources to point your portfolio in the right direction. So if we think about discovery, for example, it's the most costly and high risk work during the product development life cycle. The time and the resources that is required to build relevant libraries, relevant essays, um, being able to bring all this knowledge to, um, to, to development and uh, discovery can take years and millions of dollars of investment. So you need to be extremely thoughtful on how you deploy those type of internal resources. Okay, so there's there's portfolio risk there that, that you can maybe mitigate by in-licensing some products and focusing your R&D resources on what you can't in-license. That is correct. So that's, that's definitely an option. And that's definitely an option that is being used across the industry. But with in licensing, you are at the mercy of whatever technology is available at that time in the market. You don't get to define your product specifications. You don't know if it's going to complement your portfolio. And you don't really get input into the quality or the rigor until the product is nearly done. So, and on top of that, you may be in licensing something that your competitors are also interested in. So you might have some exposure here in terms of um, of uh, competition. Okay, and, and so it sounds like a head start here is different. So how does working with Ginkgo to progress a product head start compare to in licensing a product like you were describing? That is that is that is a very good question. So first of all, let me define product head starts. Hmm. So these are strains that we have characterized, we have validated for some specific agronomic benefit. It could be side oil activity, such as insect control. It could be uh, nutrients, such as phosphate solubilization. And in some cases, we have taken th those trends all the way through greenhouse validation. And in some cases, only through in vitro screening. 
So when you partner with Ginkgo to advance a product head starts, we are progressing one of those lead candidates through additional validation, formulation development, optimization development, to truly develop a product that is for you, for your portfolio, and for your needs. So the product will be exclusive to you. You will be leveraging one of the strains that we have in the collection, one of those leads, and therefore you will shave off 12 to 18 months of discovery. And at the same time, you get to craft a product and a formulation that truly fits your own portfolio. Now you you touched a little bit on how Head Starts can not only reduce portfolio risk, but also re help reduce product development risk. Can you elaborate on that 12 to 18 month time savings? Sure. So those Head Starts are coming from Ginkgo's proprietary strand collection, which has been sourced from agronomically relevant regions in the US. And then they have all been passed through a computational pipeline that we have developed in-house to nominate strains that have the desired tra uh, traits of, of interest, but also to remove strains that have any safety concerns, which is extremely important, obviously, from a regulatory uh, perspective. So there, there are a couple of very big R&D steps that you are skipping. So for example, you don't have to curate, you don't have to license a very large diverse library. You don't have to develop computational approaches to get the best candidates out of that specific library. And if the product head start has been validated through in vitro and in planter screening, those are the few essays that you won't have to develop. You won't have to um, automate in-house. So those are other steps that you, you also don't have to take. So you truly bypass early discovery portion of development. You bypass a very large risk, if you want, uh, with screening, selecting, validating microbes in silico and in vitro, and that can be quite valuable. So that means that your team can focus on what they do best while Ginkgo progresses your product development. All right. Um, now, so for a, a customer who signs up for a product head start, what do they receive at the end of a program? So they, re they receive a biological prototype product. So that can be a strain, that can be a live strain, but that can also be an active ingredient that is responsible for the activity that we are looking for in a prototype formulation that is going to be ready for field testing. And we are here to also help through this whole, this whole design we also have uh, agronomists in house, for example, to really mm -hmm. truly help product placement. All right, and so this is really a, a product prototype that's ready for field trials. Um, but you mentioned strains. Are we are we talk just talking about wild type strains here? No, it could be white type, but it's truly whatever the customer wants. So as I mentioned, it could be white type, it could be a biochemical product. So the product head starts would be different depending on the customer specifications and needs. And that is, you know, um, true for um, every single customer. All right. So this is a choose your own adventure, if you will, for new product development. Um, and each program leverages a lead candidate strain that really is just acting like an advanced starting point. Yeah, that's a very good way of thinking of it. I also like to think about it as a very tailored solution for mm -hmm. the customer uh, portfolio. That makes sense. Okay. Well, so lastly, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the types of products, head starts that are available? Sure. Yeah. So we currently have offerings, uh, product head starts across three categories, which are truly the categories that you know that you will need to develop products for a grower and a farmer. So crop nutrition, crop protection, and carbon sequestration. In crop nutrition, our head starts focus on microbes that enhance nitrogen and phosphorus use efficiency, and also microbes that produce plant growth regulators. From crop protection, we have a very diverse set of lead candidates to support the development of biofungicides, bioinsecticides, and bionematicide. And lastly, we have compiled a number of candidate strains that produce phytohormones and sequester carbon by increasing biomass. Wow, thanks Magali.
Um, now, I'd like to shift the conversation now and learn more about your team in Sacramento and how they support Head Starts. Um, but before I do, I just want to remind our audience, uh, if you have a question, please don't hesitate to ask uh, in that Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom panel. Um, now, Magali, perhaps you can introduce the Ag Bio team and take us into our next segment. Sure, absolutely. So today we're going to be hearing from five different team leaders um, uh, from our Ag Bio division regarding data science and analytics microbial engineering, microbial chemistry, fermentation and formulation, and very importantly as well, lab to field translation. So, but first I'm excited to introduce you to my colleague, Adam Newman, who is a leader in our data science and analytics team focused on early discovery. Hello, and thank you for that introduction, Magali. Um, as Magali said, my name's Adam Newman. And I lead a team of genomic scientists in our Ag Bio Data Science and Analytics group um, here at Ginkgo. So the data science and analytics group works closely and in partnership with teams across the Ag Bio department. And we're really embedded throughout the entire um, uh, development process. So we are working at, discover at the discovery end, as well as through Implanta and controlled environments as well as uh, you know, going all the way up the field trials and, and supporting our colleagues doing all the great work that they do. Um, we work in partnership uh, to bring the very best in data science uh, to help with good design of experiment, with biostatistics, as well as modeling, all in the hopes of enabling better decision-making um, for our scientists who are you know, working at the bench and, and collecting a lot of great data. Specifically, my team is working in, in silico strain discovery. So we leverage genomics, bioinformatics, and data science to nominate strains and genes um, that are going to have the highest likelihood of commercial success. In the context of a head start, that discovery process will have been completed prior to a customer electing a candidate um, for product development. But today, I really want to touch on that discovery process, as well as uh, let you know a bit about our metagenomics data sets and our strain library. So at Ginkgo, we've really built an industry leading metagenomic library. Um, this database contains more than a billion genes um, and it also contains 8 million uh, biosynthetic gene clusters. These are uh, sets of genes that are uh, responsible for the production of natural products. This data set is truly unique to Ginkgo. Only about 5% of the database overlaps with public sequences. So you're really tapping into a unique asset when, when you partner with us. Specifically in agriculture, we've also built a strain library with 200,000 microbial strain isolates. These were isolated from agriculturally relevant sources, including plant and root associated material. That collection itself is taxonomically diverse. It contains more than 3,000 species. And the microbes came from geographies that are relevant to agriculture. So many came from the Midwest corn and soy belts, for example. In parallel to our strain and sequence databases, we've also built a computational pipeline to sequence, assemble, and annotate genomes for strains. And this really enables us to accelerate and de-risk de -risk our strain nomination process. We work in partnership with teams across Ginkgo, and we've, com um, uh, we've completed really extensive genomic profiling of the microbial strains in that library. We've even associated many of the genes to years of phenotypic data that we've collected on these strains. So these could be phenotypes linked to uh, pesticidal properties or even things like phytotoxicity. Um, and uh, what's really great is we, we've been able to link those back to genes uh, located in those microbial genomes. That computational pipeline and that data set really serves as, a, as the foundation of our discovery process. Our discovery process is guided by what we call hypothesis-driven discovery. So we start with in silico discovery, where we'll select for genetic features that are going to characterize a microbe or an active ingredient. In addition to selecting for common traits um, that are going to be relevant to the efficacy that we want um, in, in the strain that we are putting through discovery, 
We're also de-risking um, during our nomination process to uh, really focus in on other genetic traits that are going to affect commercialization. So these could be advantageous traits, so things that perhaps could uh, help with resistance management or lead to higher microbial stability, or they could be counter selections against negative traits, for example, genotoxicity. With all of this information, we can then quickly tap in through our bioinformatics pipeline to build libraries of representative strains or microbes um, or active ingredients um, that are desired in the final product. We've really proven that this approach works uh, through the uh, through the development of products like Serenade and Sonata. Um, and uh, this really shows that we can bring differentiated and commercially relevant uh, strains to the market through this discovery process. The accuracy of the process also really enables us to screen uh, a few thousand of microbes in vitro rather than tens of thousands, um, which also accelerates the discovery process. So I'm really excited to continue this conversation offline. And please, if you have questions, use that Q&A feature um, here in Zoom. But in the meantime, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Ryan McCann, who will be talking about microbial engineering at Ginkgo. Thanks, Adam. Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan McCann. I'm a senior engineer in our Ag Bio division, leading a team focused on microbial engineering. And today, I'd like to spend a few minutes talking through how we optimize and engineer strains at Ginkgo. Take note, this is an optional step along the path from Head Start candidate to product. So it's really up to you, the partner, to decide if you're interested in using strain optimization and engineering tools to improve your product's performance. And here at Ginkgo, we offer R&D services for two basic types of ag bio products, microbials and biochemicals. Biochemical products are produced through the fermentation of unique host organisms that are engineered to produce active ingredients like proteins or small molecules at high titers in a fermenter. This is a classic example of using synthetic biology to create products that will be applied on their own, similar to traditional chemistries. I'll have more on this later. Microbial products, on the other hand, can be living or dead microorganisms that are designed to be delivered to the field as whole, intact cells. And we like to talk about them in terms of four generations. I'm going to go through each of these one by one now. Gen 1, these are essentially wild type microbes. As they're found in nature, they haven't undergone any genetic modification. We can improve product consistency and stability through fermentation and formulation optimization, but the strain itself in the formulation is a wild type microbe. Gen 2, these are strains that have been optimized through classical genetic means using mutagenesis and or adaptive laboratory evolution. The resulting variants are not considered to be genetically modified strains. As a result, these products are typically looked upon quite favorably by regulators worldwide. Gen 3 strains, often referred to as cisgenic microbes, are genetically modified through methods that either delete unwanted genes such as knockouts or insert genetic elements that are sourced from strains from within the same genus or species. And last, Gen 4, these are true transgenic strains that are genetically modified to contain genetic elements that originate from outside of the strain's genus. These microbes can be engineered to take on the unique properties and functionality of other organisms. And with the progression of each generation, we're optimizing a microbe to achieve a step change in performance for activities such as nitrogen fixation or protein secretion. Each generation of microbial products as well as biochemical products fits into a different regulatory framework and leverages different parts of Ginkgo's R&D platform. Okay, so now I'd like to highlight a few strain engineering technologies on our platform in service of microbial and biochemical products that can be used to optimize a Head Start candidate. With respect to Gen 2 microbial products, we have a suite of technologies that can enhance strain performance using non-GM means. First, I'll touch on Ginkgo's Adaptive Laboratory Evolution Platform, abbreviated ALE, which is a technology that can improve characteristics related to a strain's productivity, such as its growth rate, ability to tolerate environmental stressors, or its utilization of specific nutrients using selective pressure instead of rational engineering. ALE utilizes automated fermentation platform to control environmental and growth conditions over long periods of time, 
many hundreds of generations, forcing strains to accumulate random mutations in order to adapt to these changing conditions, yielding better performing strains. Another technology that I'm excited to talk about is our nanoliter encapsulation and screening technology we call NCAPS. NCAPS is an ultra high throughput technology that can evaluate millions of variants in just a single run. This makes it a game changer when it comes to screening large strain libraries generated through mutagenesis. With this technology, we can encapsulate each variant in its own nanoliter reactor with a target, pathogen or protein, for example, and can quickly identify and isolate the mutants that are most active against that target. This allows us to identify genetic variants of microbes that can express anywhere from 50 to 500% more active ingredients. And we're utilizing this technology platform today in agriculture to serve customers like AgBiome. We're using it to boost the activity of one of their wild type strains. In other cases where the customer is interested in developing either a Gen 3 or Gen 4 microbial product, that's either cisgenic or transgenic microbes, Ginkgo brings significant experience to the table. And that's because through our work with partners and in multiple industries, we've accumulated proprietary data on genotypic and phenotypic relationships across more than 50 host organisms. And we use computational tools to leverage this proprietary data, along with public data, to recommend genetic designs that are delivered, um, delivering the performance characteristics our customers are seeking. We then put these designs through our high throughput secondary and arrayed screening pipelines to narrow down to the improved strains. It's all part of an iterative process we refer to as a DBTL cycle, which stands for design, build, test, and learn. And finally here to wrap up, I wanna emphasize that Ginkgo excels in the engineering of unique chassis strains with the sole purpose of fermenting biochemicals. As a platform company, Ginkgo has internally developed or acquired cell lines or chassis strains that have a high flux towards certain types of molecules. So if we identify with a customer a protein or molecule that itself should be formulated as a product, we can also help to identify a host strain that maximizes its production through fermentation and then further optimize it if needed with the formulation. And we're working on biochemical projects today with major players in agriculture. Great example of this that you can find online is the work that we've done with Kronos. Essentially engineering strains that produce large volumes of rare cannabinoids, fermenters, helping them bypass a costly, low-yield plant extraction process. So that's an overview of our strain optimization and engineering tools and how they might be applied to product head starts. It's really up to you as the customer to pick and choose what services you want, and we can build a project around it. With that, I'm excited to introduce my colleague, Amanda Davidson, from our microbial chemistry team. Amanda? Thank you, Ryan. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Davidson. I'm a senior engineer in our Ag Bio division and a team leader in our microbial chemistry team. And like many of our microbes, I'm also from the Midwest Corn Belt. And here at Ginkgo, we understand that you want to make sure your products are not only effective, but also safe for the farmers and customers. Part of the way we do that is through microbial chemistry. Here, we work in partnership with many teams to identify and quantify the metabolites and proteins produced by a strain and then we determine how much more of that particular compound is needed for the product to perform effectively in the field. We help de-risk lead candidates entering a customer's product pipeline through this early characterization of bioactive compounds, as well as safety assessments and selection of best-in-class analogs. As a matrix organization, we work in interdisciplinary teams, combining high-throughput media screening, multi-omics, bioassays, and analytical methods to evaluate the biochemistry and metabolic profiles of strains to, in order to determine their active ingredients and mode of action. Within microbial chemistry, we have an entire team focused on natural products chemistry for agriculture. This team combines skills in identification, fractionation, purification, and structural characterization of microbial secondary metabolites. Through partnership with fermentation and plant science, Natural product chemistry can identify which compound analogs produced by a strain are most active and then optimize the strain using genetic and non-genetic means to produce more of these compounds. With the active ingredient in hand, we can also develop product prototypes and determine how much of an active ingredient is needed to hit efficacy targets in plant-based assays. 
we can also identify which of these active ingredients are patentable and have novel chemical structures with freedom to operate. With respect to safety, we work with the genomics team to identify genes and compounds that pose potential safety risks to humans or the environment. From a commercial perspective, understanding the active ingredient and its mode of action can help accelerate and enable a customer's registration of a biological product and help expand the number of countries it can sell to. I also wanna to briefly touch on some of the unique in vitro assays we've developed that are relevant to product head starts. Over the past 25 plus years, we've validated a large number of in vitro assays for specific applications in agriculture, ranging from nutrient use efficacy to pest control and plant disease control. You'll see these woven into the product Head Start tear sheets on our website. For example, we've developed a high throughput leaf disc assay to test insect control efficacy and phytotoxicity in vitro. We've also developed a number of in vitro assays that are difficult to find at CROs, like tomato late bite, blight phytophthora. Together, our in vitro and implant assays and screening methods enable our team to maximize the probability of success in the field. And with a strong understanding of the active components of biologicals, we can ensure that a product's first batch and 200th batch both perform equally in the field. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm excited to continue this conversation and create more visibility around the robust processes we've developed to validate our lead candidates. I'm gonna pass it off to my colleague, James Waller, who leads our awesome fermentation team here at West Sacramento. Hi, thanks, Amanda. Hi, everyone, my name is James Waller. I'm a senior engineer here in the Research Technologies Group, which encompasses both fermentation and formulation. And I lead the group focused on fermentation development and scale up. I'm going to be sharing a bit with you all today about both the fermentation and formulation team and the optimization of those products, which is really a key step in developing any ag bio product, including our Head Starts. I'll also highlight our facilities here in West Sacramento, which includes a pilot plant. <clears throat> our fermentation process development uh, fermentation and formulation teams are the bridge between product concept, all getting you all the way to commercialization. Together, they work to create, concentrate, and stabilize microbes and their biologically derived products like proteins, enzymes, and small molecules, allowing us to create a baseline formulation prototype for field testing, which is supported by the transfer to the pilot plant. So diving into fermentation optimization, this is one lever we can really pull to make a product that performs better for the growers. So for example, with an optimized fermentation process, we can yield higher spore counts and spore counts that are more stable and also increase secretion of active ingredient. This would address both efficacy and cost of goods concerns. At Ginkgo's facilities in West Sac, we combine experimental design with high throughput media preparation, all of this aided by machine learning statistical modeling for us to advance and optimize the process as fast as possible. This is also supported by other automated tools such as our Amber 250s, which I'll share a little bit about now. So these little reactors, these Amber 250s are 250 mil reactors, which are very predictive of larger scales and they allow us to test a lot of process parameters in parallel, which dramatically expands the number of experiments and variables we can run. And also we can run those in a very short time frame. So we use experiment algorithms to recommend parameters which have the greatest impact to the process, um, both on the tighter yield and productivity of the fermentation processes to help drive cost of goods down. Each reactor we can continually monitor during the fermentation process and automatically sample it at fixed intervals during the fermentation using robotics. This continual and automated sampling allows us to reduce the need for human intervention and really controls the quality of our process development experiments, significantly accelerating this part of the process development cycle. What is most exciting about these little reactors, uh, these little you know, small 250 mil reactors is we've seen time and time again that we can replicate conditions at the small scale that are predictive of the much larger scales at commercial and expect similar yield and performance. At a minimum, we see about 80% fidelity. Um, and typically with, when we scale up, we get performance within five or 10% of the target metric when we're initially scaling. So that's a bit about our fermentation team and technology we use here in West Sacramento. And I wanna talk a bit about our other function that's really important for creating that product is our formulation services. So after we've achieved the customer's performance metrics for media and fermentation conditions and achieving the yields that we need, our formulation team works to develop a prototype 
formulation that can support implant testing. With our pilot plant on site, we can generate samples for greenhouse and microplot testing. Beyond prototyping, our team delivers final formulations across a wide range of products so we can develop liquid formulations, dry fam format formulations, and also foliar and seed treatment formats as well. Uh, our formulation lab has a variety of equipment um, that are available for us to diagnose and analyze our formulations and truly develop a great formulation for the customer. So we have particle size analyzers, rheometers, warehouse conditions, simulators, which all help us develop that final product with optimized shelf life and application properties. So we have our team has a lot of experience uh, increasing the stability of microbes. So we can take some microbes, which may only be stable on a, on the shelf or on a seed for a few weeks and extend that to months or two plus years in some cases. Um, they're also experts in the use of adjuvants. Um, so they can really provide guidance on the selection and use of adjuvants, which can help increase bioefficacy and bioavailability. Really unique to our campus is the co-location of all these facilities. So we have on-site in West Sac, fermentation process team, development team, formulation development, and the pilot plant, which is right across the hall, um, co-located with our greenhouse and microplot testing facilities. This really enables us to rapidly cycle product concepts through development and testing quickly. Uh, between our pilot plants and labs, we can scale fermentation processes all the way from those small 250 mil reactors that I mentioned earlier, to 20 liters, to 300 liters, and finally to 3,000 liters, all in that, our same facility here. Our pilot plant also has downstream processing capabilities and can be used to manufacture products for large, customers' large-scale uh, field trials as needed. <clears throat> so that was a quick summary of our fermentation and formulation capabilities specific to ag biologics. One other thing I'd like to mention is that with the co-location of all these facilities, we also can rapidly cycle and create prototypes as needed. So we often create initial fermentations, formulation, develop formulation prototypes, and bring that prototype to the field and greenhouse in less than a year. So with that, I'd like to encourage you to take a look at our website and um, browse through the case studies. There's several that highlight our process development capabilities, both in ag and across other industries as well. So I've briefly touched on our implanted capabilities and facilities here in West Sacramento. These really differentiate our ability to help customers end to end with the development of their products. So I'd like to introduce my colleague, Chris Granlick, who's going to talk more about the implant to screening capabilities we have to support that really important lab to field translation. Great, thank you, James. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Granlick, and I'm a senior engineer in our egg bio division, leading a team in focused on implant screening to support lab to field translation. If you work in this industry, you know that field trials are expensive and time consuming. Our implant testing helps our partners confidently narrow down candidates that are most likely to deliver results in the field. I'm gonna walk you through a few features of our implant testing capabilities. In West Sacramento, our greenhouses and microplots span nearly five and a half acres, providing partners the option to run small scale field trials. These research plots in West Sacramento offer a bridge between the greenhouse and larger scale field trials. We invite our partners to use our microplots for prototype selection, persistent studies, compatibility testing with spray technologies. In the greenhouse, we can rigorously test drench and seed applications. Our team has deep expertise in using the plant dye system, which is a 3D multispectral imaging system that enables us to quantify treatment effects on plant growth and plant health. Multispectral imaging helps us capture quantitative data that the human eye can't. This technology replaces standard visual assessments, which can be prone to subjective error while significantly increasing throughput. Our system also enables continuous scanning throughout an entire experiment, providing key growth rate data. We've demonstrated statistically validated implanta assays for early insect and disease control, crop vigor, plant growth promotion, crop nutrition, root phenotyping, and many other parameters for various key crops, including row crops such as corn, soy, and wheat, in addition to fruit and vegetable crops such as potato, tomato, and cucumber. Some of the more unique implanta assays include our leaf disc assay for testing insect control efficacy. We have a semi-automated process to cut, spray, and image leaf discs that have been treated before or after introducing a pest. 
we use machine learning guided approaches to quantify the effect of tested treatments compared to conventional chemicals or without treatment. This helps us to nominate a smaller set of strains or treatments to test in less controlled environments like greenhouses or microplots. In combination with implanted assays, we use high throughput molecular based strain tracking and quantification methods to evaluate plant microbe interactions under controlled environments and field conditions. Strains are also tracked in soil, water, plant tissue samples to support product development and regulatory studies. Our container assay is one example of an assay we use to quantify plant microbe interactions, relying on computational analysis of root architecture to characterize treatment effects. We also leverage digital tools to test product impact on roots and shoots, which is relevant for partners who are developing biologics for plant growth regulation, carbon sequestration, nitrogen fixation, and phosphate solubilization. Our team is well aware that a good product is not just potent, but also safe, consistent, and stable in use. We've demonstrated that various implanted assays to test for phytotoxicity, rain fastness, and UV stability. The last feature that I'll emphasize, which James also mentioned, is that our implanted testing footprint shares a campus with our pilot plant and fermentation process development lab. This proximity allows us to shave months off of product development cycles by limiting material transfer processes when samples are ready for testing. Thanks for tuning into our webinar today. I'm gonna to hand it off to my colleague Magli, who's going to round out the technical portion of our webinar with a case study example of a Head Start that's been developed by our team here in West Sacramento. To everyone, uh, thank you so much for presenting our uh, R&D capabilities. So I hope that um, our listeners have a better sense now on how we approach discovery, optimization, and development for ag biologicals. Um, and as mentioned before, product head start strains have already gone through some of this validation and, and, and testing that our team um, just talked about. So to to illustrate how we are, you know, how we are doing discovery, for example, and, and, and validation, I wanted to spend a few minutes to talk about a specific head start, which is a novel nematicidal protein that our team discovered and validated. So the specifically, we have demo, demonstrated significant activity against um, root knot nematode and soybean cyst nematode in a greenhouse assay. And I just wanted to kind of walk you through on how we got there. So as, um, as uh, Adam was mentioning, we first started by diving into the literature to identify nematicidal proteins and that were identified and isolated from soil microbe. And then we used those published protein sequences as a hook to then identify similar sequences among the strands in our microbial collection. And remember that our microbial collection has uh, some very, very unique species as well as uh, sequences. So taking into account the probability of success, the safety and the source of the organisms, our computational pipeline yielded 19 new proteins uh, that were different from the ones that were present in the literature to progress to in vitro testing for nematicidal activity. So then our in vitro screening campaign as, as illustrated in, in this slide here, comprise three different bioassays, an egg hatch assay and two toxicity assays, one for C. elegans and one for plant parasitic nematodes. And that really allow, allows us to look at different mode of action. So from these assays, we narrow down to four protein candidates to be further tested in planta. And then in planta, our team characterized each protein nematicidal activity. And this is going to be shown in the next slide. And protein R emerged as a lead candidate across multiple mode of actions. So if we walk through the various results here, in a tube assay, we quantify reduction in egg hatching. And that is what uh, is what is representing on the graph here on the right. And you can see that protein R and protein BT demonstrated significant activity related to un to untreated control. And relative to a chemical control, protein R showed significant reduction in root knot nematode gold formation and nematode development in cucumber roots. 
In a greenhouse assays, we also tested each of those four protein candidates, uh, inhibition on root node nematode egg formation in incucumber roots. And again here, as shown here again, the protein R showed significant activity related to, uh, to uh, entry control. So now, after having tested protein R activity against root not nematode in cucumber, we were curious, and of course, we wanted to see if it had activity against soybean cyst nematode. And in a greenhouse assay, here protein R emerged as a lead candidate, showing again significant inhibition of soybean cyst nematode invasion in soybean roots. I also want to, uh, to drive your attention to the chemical control that we use as a benchmark, Frioparam, and protein R had uh, the same type of activity than the chemical control. We always try to have a very uh, relevant commercial benchmark to really understand you know, what is going on uh, uh, with our leads. So to summarize, our team validated in planta protein R efficacy against root knot nematode and soybean cyst nematode. And our platform by USA was also able to tease out various protein R's mode of action uh, effect on, for example, egg hatch, germinal penetration, and, and development. So after this specific example here, so what does it mean for you as a partner, partnering, partnering with Ginkgo? So as we said before, Ginkgo is a platform company. It's not a product company. So we are not competitors of any type of product companies. We are truly here to serve as a partner uh, to really help you develop your portfolio of ag biological products. We have a very, very deep knowledge in, in, uh, in ag. And we invite you to partner with us to take candidates like protein R further in whatever product concepts you need for, for your own goals. So let me talk you through what that would look like uh, using again the example of, of protein R. So suppose that you're interested in developing a biological seed or drench treatment with a white type strain that expresses and secretes protein R. So we will start by narrowing down from our own strain collection, a subset of strains that will express protein R and meet a very specific safety profile. And we will match uh, those, uh, those criteria that are also relevant to the criteria for your own product concepts. And all of, this, all of this part here will be done in collaboration between both parties. We will then perform in vitro metabolomic studies to quantify um, and identify the best protein R secretors. Then our fermentation team will drive toward a process to further maximize protein R expression. And then we're developing a prototype formulation to use for efficacy testing in planta. And then through that testing, we will nominate the top performers and the numbers is really up to, uh, up to you to take to field trials and to eventually commercialize. So that's a very short of, uh, overview of a product head start using specifically bionematicide and one idea on, on how we can, you know, we can partner to take a characterized ingredient and moving forward through the product development all the way to uh, commercialization. So as I mentioned before, uh, we have six other product head starts in three different categories that I mentioned before. We have natural fixation for cereal, for legumes, phosphate solubilization, biofungicide, bioinsecticide, plant growth regulators, and biologicals for carbon sequestration. So please take a look at those, look into, into our website, reach out to me directly if you're curious on how we can partner, and we would be more than happy uh, to continue this discussion. So I appreciate all of you joining today. And now, as we stated before, we're going to finish our, our webinar today with a couple of Q&A questions. Uh, and we're going to do that uh, myself and, um, and Josh all together. Thanks, Magali. It's good to see you again. Um, we have a couple of good questions coming in from our audience. Um, we'll start off with two from Leonor Lopez. Uh, what methods or technologies does Ginkgo employ to ensure the safety and e efficacy of the products that we help develop when applied by partner companies at scale in real world agricultural settings? 
Absolutely. So thank you so much for that specific question. So in terms of safety, so as mentioned before, what we have developed is a database, if you want, of compounds that are not safe. Um, and there could be uh, the, that, that could be a small molecule, that could be a protein, that could be a toxin, and all that also also can be antibiotics and antibiotics uh, resistance genes. So we do have a very deep knowledge on how uh, how we can uh, we can deal with uh, with with specific qu uh, questions around safety. The other piece that we are also doing, and you heard that during the microbial chemistry uh, with Amanda. Is we and that is very very unique to what we do. We have a very strong knowledge around natural product chemistry, and we spend quite a bit of time understanding what the strain uh, expresses under the conditions that those strains will encounter, uh, encounter in the field. So that's our own safety, and after and after that, of course, we can also help um, uh, developing some very specific safety uh, safety essays. For, uh, for regulatory packages. In terms of efficacy, so uh, as an example, what Chris mentioned is we do have implant ISAs, and those implant ISAs have been further refined, if you want, to give uh, the best possible uh, predictability with what is happening in the field. So we do have, as an example, pot assays that uh, we can run uh, with a very um, known commercial benchmark, um, small molecule. So we know that what type of efficacy we will get in the field with a small molecule. And therefore, when we, uh, when we test that, when we test our leads with a small molecule, as an example, in a greenhouse, we can predict, if you want, uh, what will happen in the field. Um, lastly, we also have, as I was mentioning, algorithmists uh, that uh, can uh, be a thought partner, if you want, to develop uh, specifically design in the field to really answer the questions that we need to, um, to answer and to really dive into uh, product placement. All right. Thanks, Magali. Um, and then uh, Leonor also asked, uh, additionally, how do you assess the suitability and compatibility of potential partners for your projects? And I think um, I'll take this one. Mm -hmm. So uh, Ginkgo, we take a highly consultative approach to each of our projects. Um, so we work with each of our partners to understand what the product concept that the partner is targeting actually is how Ginkgo BioWorks can align its services to enable that product concept and then what the commercial, um, uh, and then uh, negotiate around the, the commercial requirements of the partner and of course of Ginkgo. And what that really looks like in practice is that you'll work with me to discuss a high level technical uh, brief I will bring in our technical solutions team to uh, get details on exactly how we can align the technical interests of the customer and Ginkgo Bioworks. We'll negotiate a commercial agreement that is uh, um, that is specific to the product concept and the partner, and then we'll go from there. The uh, Let's see, we also have an anonymous question. Uh, how much of the IP does Ginkgo own at the end of development? Um, so we get this question all the time. I'm glad that uh, anonymous asked. The first thing to know is our partner's background IP, what they bring to the table, whether that be a strain or a process, a formulation, um, that's yours always and forever. The uh, at the end of a, pro a program, Ginkgo will provide not only the formulated strain for you know a prototype strain and a prototype formulation for field testing, but also an exclusive worldwide license to all the IP that's necessary to commercialize uh, any product or to commercialize that product. I should say, um, and what that means is. You don't, it's not just a license to the strain, it's a license to any updates to a formulation, any specifics um, on a fermentation process, anything else. Uh, now the material that's not 
commercially relevant that does get developed in the pro in um, the process of developing that project uh, that does stay with Ginkgo. And this is how we build our code base. And that's why we're able to offer the breadth and depth of services that we do. It's how we drive our costs down and it's how we make biology easier to engineer. I think we have one final question. Um, Magali, um, you know, we've talked a lot about different services, different product head starts, different projects. Uh, do I have to sign up for all of Ginkgo services or if I want to sign up for a head starter, or can I uh, can I use Ginkgo services individually as I see fit? Absolutely. So you can use uh, Ginkgo services individually because, as I was as I, I we were discussing, we really want to develop a project and a collaboration that meets your needs. So sometimes it means that it's only going to be a white time strain and we'd only have to do very, very small uh, optimization and then we will stop there. And sometimes depending on what your target is, we might have to do a lot more optimization and kind of deploy a lot more you know, um, methods. So those are really going to be um, you know, discussed with a partner and we bring a, a proposal, if you want, that, that truly match what you know what you need oh, thanks magali okay well so this is the end of our virtual event uh, we just highlighted our product head starts and that's one way of accessing ginkgo's platform this is your opportunity to accelerate product development and to skip years of discovery let's connect let's discuss how you can take advantage of head starts to advance your product portfolio faster and with less risk we are building the leading platform for ag biologicals for you. And we want to work with you to take a different approach to R&D. What are the challenges you can't solve today that will unlock new opportunities for your business? We want to hear from you. We have a team of experts with more than 25 years of experience in ag bio who are ready to work with you. And our team is going to be at ABIM in Basel, Switzerland in two weeks. We'd love to meet with you there. We'd be happy to meet with you here as well. You can also contact us at agriculture at ginkgobioworks.com. Thanks for tuning in today. Until next time, as we like to say around here at Ginkgo, let's grow.